of today, um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if we're stopping the table today. Uh, I like to usually close, close series out at the end of a month. Um, it just makes sense that way, right? Um, or not. Maybe it doesn't make sense that way. Um, but I like the fact that today as we close, our kids are with us today, right? Parents, that's your chance to say yes. Okay. Because um, as I was putting this together, um, actually, last night at about, um, thank you, sir, at about 11.30 last night, I kind of had this, this thought um, run through my head. Just embrace it, folks. Just embrace it. It's the sound of a church that has a future, all right? All right, just embrace the kids. Because if you can't embrace the kids, half the time that I talk, you can't embrace me because I know I act like one. So um, <laughs> at least there's one honest person that will be like, yep, you're right. Um, but I, I was sitting here and I was thinking about the the table. I was thinking about the blood. How do we talk about the blood with, with kids in the house, right? And so I knew today we were going to be talking about the sprinkled blood of Jesus. Last week, we talked about the shed blood, which is the covenant that we have and all the things we have access to through the shed blood. And the only way that you can apply the shed blood of Jesus is if you sprinkle it on what it needs to cover right? Go back to the first Passover, and what did they do? Oh, we've been talking about this for a month. They dipped into the blood, and they put it on the doorpost, which in certain translations, they word it as they sprinkled the blood on their doorpost. Um, kids, I know you have a sheet of paper in front of you, and I am going to do my best to make sure I hit all 24 of those empty openings for you to fill in. So I'm not even going to make you guess, but I will tell you before I dive into this, it will be underlined on the screen, okay? And if there should be one up there, just say, Mr. Nick, can we get the slide, please, Right? doesn't put any pressure on the people in the sound booth when you say that, just so you know. It does actually a lot. But where we have to understand is to apply the blood of Jesus to our lives, we have to do something, right? You can't apply it if you're not doing some kind of action, right? And how many people know that with an action, you get a... Reaction, right? So if you apply it and you take the time to apply it to your life, you are going to get some kind of a reaction, right? So we're going to dive into this. <clears throat> Exodus 12, 22 to 23. Kids, Exodus is underlined. Just going to help them out so we can move through it. Take a bunch of... Hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. Verse 23, when the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. How many people have ever felt like you have a destroyer that enters your home? Come on. Let's just be honest. Some of you are like, I don't have kids at home. When you did have kids at home, did you ever feel like there were moments where a destroyer entered into your home? Right? Have you ever been in a home where it just felt a little chaotic? Anybody? You got your schedule coming. You've got people's attitudes coming. Let me get an amen, parents. Amen. Right? Did you know that eight-year-olds can have attitudes? I'm discovering this right now. I won't name who it is, but you know who's eight in my family, right? You can figure it out. But yeah, you just, you just feel like that. And when you feel like that, how, when it feels chaotic in your home, how does it make you feel? Stress. 
Kids, let me ask you this question. All the parents, pay attention. Kids, have you ever felt like your house was stressful? Some parents are like looking at their kid like, don't, don't. Okay, thank you for being honest. Our house sometimes feels stressful, doesn't it? Yeah, don't talk, don't talk. Just raise your hand, nod your head, don't talk. (laughs) But our houses can feel like that. And sometimes the enemy wants to tear down homes, especially homes where the presence of the Lord should be resting in, right? Especially homes where we should be wiping, sprinkling the blood of Jesus, the sprinkled blood onto the doors of our homes to, so the blood of Jesus is covering our homes, our family, our finances, our marriages, right? Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Hebrews eleven twenty eight. 28. Look at the screen. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. Firstborns are important, aren't they? Firstborns are important. They're like your, maybe I'm wrong. Parents, you can tell me if I'm wrong. They're like where you test it all out at, right? You test it out on the first one, you figure it out by the second one, right? Well, maybe, maybe, yeah. Tom, did you say that? I know your kids, so yeah, okay, I feel it, okay. That's why we won't have a third one because we think we've got it figured out, right? Like, I'm like, I don't want to find out that I don't have it figured out with number three, right? But but we, 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 First, firstborns are important. So we have to look at the way they did this and, and the way that every child of God in Egypt did this action. That tells me that we can do this action as often as we need to, as much as we want to, right? It's not something that we just do once, sprinkle the blood of our homes and we're good. No, because life happens, does it not? Anybody feel that right now? Life is happening, right? If you watch the news long enough, even if it's not happening in your home, it's easy to watch the news and go, it's over, right? And then what are you consumed with? It's over, right? Ephesians 5, 25 to 26 says, husbands, I love this. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. And he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the what? The word. I I hope what I love about this is it tells us exactly how we need to sprinkle the blood. Right? Because it says that he might sanctify and cleanse her. Who is the bride of Christ? Who's the church? We are. So who is the bride of Christ today? We are. And so it says he he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. We get cleansed and washed because of the word. That tells me in order to sprinkle the blood... Hold on, I gotta make sure I hit this for the kids. <laughs> we will sprinkle the blood of the covenant with our words. Another underlined one. Maybe we should do this for adults too. This would help you guys take notes maybe. Yeah, more work for me. Um, we sprinkle the blood of the covenant with our words. Now let me ask you this question. How many of you today as we get ready to start a new week, you have used all of your words this week to speak life. The response I figured we would get, right? How difficult is it for you to speak every word that you speak with life in it? Is it hard? Kids, 
you guys say a lot of words, right? Sometimes you say them too soon when we're not awake enough to listen. And sometimes you say them too fast and we miss them. But you guys say a lot of words. And so let me ask you, every time you say a word, do you use it in a positive way? Every word you say. This is confession time. Don't worry, your parents are in the same boat, right? It, kids, is it hard to say positive things all the time? Why? You can be honest. That's what we're about here in this church is we're, we're, we can be honest. Nobody will judge you, including your parents. Why is it hard to say positive things every time we speak? Well, that makes it sound like we punish you for things you say all the time. Thank you. Somebody other than my kid uh, has a good answer. Why is it hard to say something positive all the time? Adults, you want to help? Because life isn't always positive. But was it positive when Jesus walked the earth? He managed well, right? So we should be mindful that the way we sprinkle the blood is through our words. So what are you sprinkling with your words today? How many people have ever used the expression, your words have power, right? Somebody in our house uses it all the time, usually against me. I won't name her. Uh, you guys don't know who I'm talking about. But there are things that I have said before and, and, and this person will look at me and go, Nick, your words have power. You might want to change the way you said that. You might not want to speak that because now you're giving it power, right? Anybody ever been there? Or you say something and then you're like, mm, I might have just given the enemy a foothold, Right? I might have just cracked the door enough for the enemy to use my words against me, right? Okay, we'll move on. I get it. So the Israelites, they used hyssop to sprinkle on. Can I just give you a real thing of what it could possibly sound like to sprinkle the blood of Jesus over your home every day? Can I just give you a really, it's not anything special. You don't have to pray the right way to say these things. You don't have to use all the these and thous in the, in the correct order to say all these things. It's this easy. I am healed. Right? Oh, this one. I am saved. Right? I am delivered. Okay? I am forgiven. Right? I received grace. Right? I have received mercy right? I receive help in a time of need. How about this one? Devil, you cannot touch my family. It's that easy. That easy. And there are too many times where we choose to give our words to the problem to forfeit our words and our power to the enemy then use them to plead the blood of Jesus over us and our families. We've been on this journey for five weeks of at the table, talking about the blood of Jesus, talking about what it means for us because I don't think it's talked about enough. And today it's about how do we make the blood of Jesus real for us today? How do I make it real for me today, right? When you plead the blood of Jesus, kids, this is one. When you plead the blood of Jesus, you are standing in legal authority. The devil has no longer, no longer has a hold or consent to mess with you. When you plead it, you are standing in legal authority. We don't use our authority enough, do we? 
We don't stand there and go, no, 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 no. I've got way more authority than you do, devil. Right? You were kicked out. I was welcomed in. Right? Let's just go there. Like, it's the fact that you lost your seat because you were stuck in, the, in glorifying yourself. And Jesus looked at me and said, I'm going to die for you. I'm going to shed my blood for you so that you can sit at the table. And then when you're sitting at the table, you can take my blood that I shed for you and you can sprinkle it to cover your whole entire family. Because you know what the Lord's been speaking to me when I've been praying for, for leaders in our church th these last couple weeks? He's been, he's been t having me specifically pray over our leaders that as they sprinkle the blood of Jesus over themselves, and as they have a seat at the table, that that blood will cover the people who are close to them, sitting next to them at the table, right? Because how many people know if you have a seat at the table, you want people sitting around you that you like, right? It's your influence, is it not? Yeah? The next potluck we have, just, just look around. Watch how people choose who they sit with. It's because it's their, their, their circle of influence. And so the prayer literally has been, let them bleed the blood of Jesus so that it just overflows onto other people around them so that they're covered, right? Let their cup over, right? Bible talks about that. <clears throat> so the sprinkling is the legal process. And so kids, here's another one. The thing is, is there has to be action. The blood of Jesus is there. It's already been poured out. It's already been shed. You're not waiting on the blood of Jesus. But what it takes is it takes action. It was one thing for them to slaughter a lamb and fill the basin outside with the blood. It was another thing though for them to get the hyssop, dip it in there and then sprinkle it on their doorpost. Some of us forfeit our legal authority we have because we're standing looking at the basin of the blood that was shed for us and we're not taking any action with it. And so we're forfeiting our right that we have sitting at the table. And then we sit there and we go, why is life so hard? Why do I just feel like the enemy keeps attacking me? Why do I feel like this one thing that I continue to pray for isn't happening? I can tell you 100% of the time, it's because you haven't taken action with sprinkling the blood of Jesus over your home, over yourself, over your family, over your marriage, over your job, over all the things that you have access to. Well, I can't get ahead financially. Plead the blood of Jesus over your finances, right? Josh said it today during worship. He wants it all. He's, he's already shed the blood for it, right? And so we have to take action, right? Take action. <clears throat> Zechariah 13, one says, in that day, a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for unclean uncleanliness, right? And so here we look at this in, in the foundation, it, in the basin, it speaks to the same thing. There's this thing that has been opened for us to become clean with, for us to be covered with, for us to, to, to actually be covered by and protected by. And as we declare the blood, we are under God's protection and that keeps the destroyer at a distance. We'll just sit there for a little bit, kids, so you can figure out your, your two blanks. The children of Israel were instructed, don't leave your home until the blood has been put on your doorpost. Don't leave until morning. Sprinkle the blood, don't leave until morning. Let's just be honest. How many of us, if we're being real, the majority of the week, we are running behind? Anybody? In the mornings, you just feel like you're just, you just run out of time? And, and what are you doing when you run out of time? You are, okay. 
I'm not going to judge. Right? You're rushing. And when you're rushing, you're not thinking about, did I plead the blood of Jesus over my family today? Did I pray protection over my kids today? Did I plead the blood of Jesus over my finances before I left the house today? Wouldn't that change things if we just start using the authority that we had and the access we have to the cup in this blood to just, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over my house. God, thank you for your son whose blood has been poured out for me. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself, over my wife, over my kids, over the school that they're about to walk in. I plead the blood of Jesus over their classroom. I plead the blood of Jesus over anything that I have an interaction with. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus over. Why? Because I have the authority to because of where I'm seated at at the table, right? It's the same position that you have if you're seated at the table. But I will tell you, there are some of us who are standing around the table that we've been invited to, watching other people partake of the cup and partake of the bread and sitting there going, just like it was said, I want that too. But you can't let yourself even let go enough to sit at the table at the chair that's empty that you're looking at and you know is yours. Because we forfeited it. Does that make sense? Because we're not using our authority. We're not using the power of simple things like, plead the blood of Jesus over my house right now. This house is a house of the Lord, right? This is your home, Jesus. This is your home, Father God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. I plead the blood of Jesus over it. Devil, you can't hang out here no more. Right? You ever walked into a room in your house and it just feels off? Anybody? You just walk in and you're like, wow, that feels weird. Right? Use your access right there and go, I plead the blood of Jesus over this room. Why? Because I'm in it. Devil, you can't be here, right? Some of us move into houses and we have no idea what went on in that home before we got there, right? You anointed it? You pled the blood of Jesus over it? Could help you. Second Timothy 1 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. We must be aware of the power of our words. We've got to be aware of the power of our words. Last week, we talked about Job, and even he was scared to death that his kids might have sinned. And so he was taking the covenant, and he was, he was doing sacrifices to cover them with the blood of the sacrifice, just in case they sinned. And then he said in, in the scripture, the thing I feared has happened. We talked about it last week. We have to make sure that when we speak things over our families, we're not doing it out of fear, right? Devil, I'm not saying this because I fear you. I'm saying this because I have the authority and I have faith, right? I'm not doing this because I'm scared. I'm not doing this because I'm worried. I don't, I don't welcome the Holy Spirit into, into my boys' room at nighttime because I'm scared of the devil, I welcome him into the room at nighttime as I pray over them because I want him to speak to them while he's sleeping. Because how many people know if you've had kids or you've been around kids, the devil messes with their dreams, does he not? It's the authority we have. It's the power we have. In Luke twenty two eighteen, 18, Jesus is telling his disciples, I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. The fruit of the vine was a vinegar. It was like a sour wine mixture at that time, right? So when he was speaking of that, that's what it was, it was correlated to. And in Matthew 27, 34, it says, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Jesus didn't drink of it, even though he was probably thirsty because... 
it wasn't time yet. Do you know when it was time? John 19, 28 and 30 says, later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. I just want to pause there because I don't think it was just a physical thirst at that point. It specifically comes after the scripture says he knew that everything had been finished and that the scripture would be fulfilled. He knew that why he came to the earth had just been finished. And I don't think it was just a physical thirst he was feeling at that time. I think it was a spiritual thirst of I can't wait until the kingdom of God is here. I am thirsty for God's kingdom to be here. I am thirsty to have the victory over death for for my kids, right? There was more more than just a physical thirst here. And so then a jar of wine vinegar was there. They soaked a sponge in it. They put the sponge on the stalk of the, what is that? the hyssop plant, that's interesting, and lifted it to Jesus's lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Gave it up because he knew this is it. Everything that I came here for is done. Now, now I've got to go get the keys to the rest of the kingdom, right? Right? I love the fact, though, that they put the sponge on hyssop. What did they use to put the sprinkle the blood on the doorpost again? Hyssop. The connection that I I made here was literally looking at that going, they, they used hyssop to sprinkle the blood of Jesus on the doors so that death would just pass them by. And then Jesus is getting ready to say, it is finished because he knew he finished everything he was supposed to finish and they used hyssop to take the sponge to give him the drink that he was asking for. Taking the hyssop and connecting it to the mouth, meaning that now our words is where it happens at, right? You guys, maybe it was just me, but there's definitely this this moment though where the hyssop is important here. Revelation 12, 11 said, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Our words are the key part of how we overcome the enemy. Kids, that's another one, overcome an enemy. Our words are a key part of how we overcome the enemy. Proverbs 18, 21 says this, and I'm sure if you've been in church long enough or around church long enough, you've heard this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Can I just ask you right now, just to examine yourself, to look in the mirror right now and ask yourself, what side of the power do you enjoy? If life and death is in the power of our tongue, and then it says, and those who love it will eat its fruit, can I ask you, what side of that do you love? Do you love life? Or do you love it when there's private conversations? Let's just be real. I remember when I worked at a corporation, We didn't have a water cooler, but we knew where we went if we wanted to know what the gossip was inside the company. It's usually the mail room. I happened to be the one delivering the mail, so I was usually there. Listening to all the... And you know, there are people who love that. They love it. They love it, and they don't even know they love it. The devil's using people with what they love, and they don't even realize the devil's using them right? Well, I just want to know what's happening so I can help. Are you speaking life? Right? Think about it. So here we have it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. I don't know about you, but if a banana looks bad, I'm not eating it. Right? Well, unless you're going to go make banana bread and then that's about all it's good for, right? 
But at that point, we have to understand, like, man, like, I don't, I don't look at my boys and be like, it's not all the way brown yet. You can eat it, right? Like, I don't see where the worm crawled into the apple and then look at Nikolai and go, you could still eat it. It's probably not in there. It's a 50-50 shot. You know, you pull out an orange that now looks like an orange raisin. It's probably still a little juicy, right? I'm not going to lie. I've done it before. I pulled one out, didn't realize it was bad. Nikolai took one bite and was like, Bleh! and spit it out in my car, right? Because I didn't take the time to realize it had gotten some death in it, right? So just be careful. Careful what you enjoy. Something the Israelites did when they were in Egypt is they, um, they used this thing called the mezuzah. And the mezuzah was for the children of Israel, it was a scroll that they would place at their doorpost. And they placed it at their doorpost and there was a scroll inside of it and there were some things on it. It was in a decorative case. It was something they couldn't miss, but they put it at their door, their doorpost so they could remember um, Deuteronomy. It's referring to Deuteronomy 11:20, and they, and thou shall write them upon their doorpost of thine house and upon the gates that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. They literally put this scroll by their door while they were in Egypt to remember what was written on their doorpost. And Jewish, traditional Jewish homes still to this day still use the mezuzah and they put it by their door in remembrance of what happened. Because also Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command to you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand that they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Can I just be real with you? There are other religions that are successful at teaching their children their religion, whether it's right or wrong, because they're constantly reminding their children of what the religion says. Constantly Remind them, when they go to bed, when they wake up in the middle of the conversations, in the middle of chaos in the home, they're reminding them of what God did, right? Or their God did. But they're really successful at it. Why? Why are we not? Maybe that's a better question. Because we've gotten to a place in America where we expect kids' church to teach our kids things about God. Do you know that in kids' church, we're only with your kids two hours a week? Your kids are in school longer than that. You can't tell me that they're not being taught things that aren't in the Bible. My kid came home. Oh, there we go. There it is. Talking about some stuff that nobody wants me to talk about. My kid came home the other day and he was like, dad, what's your element? Yeah, here we go. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not an airbender. Uh, and uh, I'm definitely not, who, who was that? Captain Planet? You guys remember him? You guys remember that cartoon? Captain Planet? He's our hero. Going to take pollution down to zero. Nope. Okay. Weird show my mom and dad let me watch. But it was all about the elements, earth, wind, fire. And he comes home and he goes, dad, I'm fire. And I was like, no, you're not. And he was like, who told you that? And he was like, teacher at school. And I was like, hmm. I'm like, there's only one person who came from an element. That was Adam. He was made of earth. After that, we were made by our moms and dads. 
and God knit us in our, in our mother's womb. Like I went through the whole thing with him and I'm like, absolutely not. And he's like, well, what's your element? I was like, I'm not an element, Nikolai. Well, I'll look it up because you know, your birthday's in October. Otto, he's lightning. And I was like, stop it. I was like, that is not true. Like, I, I mean, come on folks. And so you're expecting kids church to teach your kids all about the Lord. What are you doing? Are you sprinkling the blood over them? Are you praying with them at nighttime? Are you praying with them over dinner and not just like good food, good meat, good God, let's eat? Like not that. Like, are you spending time? Like the song we sat on at the end, there's no place I'd rather be. Guess what? His presence is in the church. Who's the church? It's not just in this building. The presence just doesn't sit here and wait for you to come back on Sunday. You can be with your children in the presence. You could be with your friend in the presence. You could be with your husband or wife in the presence at your home. So the question is, what are you doing? Right? And don't think I'm coming at you today. This is not me coming at you today. This is me preaching to the choir, folks. This is me waking up at the last minute in the morning and running around like a chicken with my head cut off to get the boys off to school and try to look somewhat presentable so they don't judge me when I walk up to the door, right? Like It's me too. Am I being intentional with my household? Am I sprinkling the blood over my household? Because here's, here's where it is. Hey, Josh, can you come up here for a second? Wait, there's like a hundred Joshes, I forgot. Josh Bradstreet, can you come up here for a second? I know I have to, Josh, actually, I guess I'm gonna call all the Josh. Josh Mobley, will you come up here? Josh Mosley, I know you've already been up here, but we like looking at you, so come on up, big boy. Um, Micaiah, can you come here for a second? Jamie, can you come here for a second? Did you just shake your head at me before I called your name? I, you did, you did, I, I saw you, I saw you. Because here's the important thing, and kids, I don't know if I'm going to skip over a few things, so guess what? Just tell Miss Tab I said you got them all right. Where'd Miss Tab go? She's right there. Miss Tab, they got them all right. If I skip over them, they got them all right. I'm sorry, but I have to say this before I let everybody go. Tristan, can you come up? How many is that? I'm going to give, give me six. I need, I, need, I need one more. I need one more. Uh, let's see here. Jake, come on up. I'm just looking for guys that make me feel comfortable up here. And I don't want to be the tallest one, so I mean, like, I got a few of them. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. In the Bible, it, it specifically talks about this one part, and I want to make sure we get there because this is what the Lord says. So, so you three and you three can just go hang out in the altar for a second. If you want to pray down there, feel free to. It's open all the time. Um, <laughs> so just hang out because you guys are going to come up here for a second, though. Uh, where's Nikolai at? Nikolai, come up here, buddy. Come on, man. Just be like excitedly. Dad, yeah, I'm excited to be up here with you. Here's the thing. This kid, even though I may not say all the right words all the time, he'll agree. I don't say all the right words all the time, right? Yeah, I'm okay to admit that to you. I'm not perfect. It's fine. And you can't judge me because I ratted myself out. I don't tell this kid enough how much he means to me. I worry too much about how I think he should act. Come on, parents, you've probably been there before. You don't want him to be like you. Anybody ever? Be better than me, please. Right? And then I watch him and I go, shoot, those prayers aren't working. Um, <laughs> they are, they are, because he is better than me. I'm not going to cry. And you're not going to cry either, so hold it together. Because <laughs> we are the same. <laughs> Last week, I spent too much time talking about how I would fight for people who are close to me. <laughs> Uncomfortably, probably too much time. But this is what I prayed for. This, this is 
this is the future for me, right? Like, like this is my kid who I'm going to pour into every chance I get, whether it's on the baseball field, whether it's in the football field, whether it's in the backyard, whether it's showing him how to pick up dog poop. I mean, all of it, right? I'm going to pour into him everything I have. And then one day he's going to go, I don't need to know that. I don't need to know that. My dad's weird, um, right? But I don't want the enemy to mess with my kid. I don't want my, I don't want the enemy. I don't want to give the enemy a foothold to mess with my home, right? Because this represents my home. I will tell you, we will find babysitters for our kids when Lindsay and I want to spend time together. And after about 24 hours of not having them around, we're going crazy because home doesn't feel right. We went on a vacation for our anniversary last year. And after we were there for a day, I was like, I could go home. Like, let's FaceTime the boys, right? Because this is important. And scripture talks, this protection, right? This blood that we're supposed to sprinkle over our homes. Scripture talks about this. <laughs> so kids, there's another one right here. I'm gonna give it to you real quick. The same protection is available through Jesus when we apply the word and plead the blood, right? So this protection that we have, out of Deuteronomy where we can bind up the enemy and we can tell the enemy where to go, right? To the feet of Jesus to be dealt with because I'm not dealing with it. And what I love though is, is in Matthew 12, 43 and 45, it says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. Now this is, this is the enemy speaking. I will return to the house of which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. And then he goes and he takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. This is where we're talking about booting the enemy out of our stuff. And the enemy, all he's doing is looking for somewhere else to, to live. And then he says, I'm going to go back where I came from. Right? I'm going to go back to the Heine house. That's where I came from. I can't find anywhere else to go. I'm going to come back to the Heine house. But here's the thing. I booted him out. So you're, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> Surprise, guys. You guys are all bad guys. But here's the thing, though. I booted him out. And I said, don't you dare. I, <laughs> I just got real. I'm sorry. I apologize. I love you a lot. <laughs> You're like my, my old, oldest child I would have had when I was like 12. Um, <laughs> but I kicked him out because I didn't want him here. Because this is where the blood of Jesus resides, in my home. But here's the thing, though. He goes and he gets his buddies. So go ahead and go collect your friends. You can like be like, you know, non-Avengers assemble. Um, you guys can, I'll invite you. I'll invite you, I guess. Just, you know. so, so here's the thing though. He, he goes and gets his buddies and he's like, I'm going to make it worse for the Heine household than it was before he kicked me out of there. But here's the thing. I love it because what God says is, this is the cool part. What God said was, <clears throat> When you sprinkle the blood over the doorpost, I'm going to come and I'm going to stand in front of your door. I'm going to stand in front of your door. And when death comes, death will not be able to enter in your home. Why can't death enter the home? Because the blood's there and God's standing there saying, you can't come in. You got to move on, devil. You can't come in. But here's the thing, though. That scripture in Matthew says, I look in and I see that the house is swept and it's in order. How does the enemy get to look into our homes? Because we've left the front door open. 
You may have gotten saved and you may have said, you know, I, I've got the, the shed blood of Jesus on my life and in my house. But the thing is though, is we're not taking and sprinkling the blood on our doorway daily saying, this is a house where the house of the Lord is. This is where the, the presence sits. This is where the anointing is. This is where the blood covers. This is what it covers. And so we leave our door open and the enemy can look right in and go, oh, they've cleaned up for me. That's just more room for me to mess around with. Oh, they organized it. I'm going to bring chaos, right? But as soon as you take action, kids, you remember I said action, you got to do something. As soon as you take action and you go down and you use your words to sprinkle the blood of Jesus over your doorway, God is standing there. And it doesn't matter how bad these guys thrash, which at any time you guys can. You guys are the saddest group of devils I've ever experienced in my life. Yes. Yes. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. God says, it doesn't matter what you give me. It doesn't matter what you throw at me. I am here and I am going to protect you and I'm going to cover your door and I'm going to break away your house because the enemy doesn't have room here no more. Amen. Right? They may have touched them, but the Lord said, get away from him. Right? Because your kids are going to get touched. The enemy's going to have little access points. The enemy's going to have little things at school. I mean, goodness sakes, our kids are getting iPads when they go to school. Right? Let's just start there, right? But there's little access points. But God is still standing there saying, you can't stay here. You can't stay here because they've sprinkled the blood over the door and now I'm standing there. Now I'm making sure that my kids are taken care of, right? From the oldest to the youngest, because it's the same thing for me. If I sprinkle the blood over, guess who's covered? I am too, right? I'm covered just as much as he's covered. He's covered as much as Otto's covered, right? Goodness sakes, if I'm pleading the blood over Jesus, I bet you my dog Brutus is covered. Right, right. I don't know if that's how it works, but I can imagine anything living in my home yeah. is covered. And when I cover the blood of Jesus, then I go, guess what? I'm going to cover my finances in the blood of Jesus too. Guess what? That means the devil can't come into my bank account and make money disappear. You guys all know that happens. It's weird, right? It's just, it's just, yeah, Amazon, that's the devil. eBay, it's the devil, right? Just any store you can order online, it's the devil, right? Uh, but the thing is, though, is we've got to take action and cover our home, yeah. right? We have to, not just for you, for your husband or wife. Even if they don't come to church, you should be covering them, right? Cover the household that you live in for whenever your friends come over and walk through your doorway so then they're covered. Ooh, come on. Where they come in and they just feel something different and you can go, oh, that's because I made sure I sprinkled the blood this morning before you came over. Right? Right? It's okay to sound a little weird, right? Because people can walk around and go, what? what's your element? I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a flower. Right? Like, 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 I don't know if that's an element. That's probably an element. That's, that's how much I don't know about that fake stuff, right? And, and the thing is, though, is we can sit here, though, and we can talk about all this other weird stuff. Like, you know, this line means this and this baloney, Right? That line came because I cut my hand. That's a scar. I don't know what you're reading, right? Why can't we sound weird and look at our friends and be like, guess what? Today's gonna be a good day for you because I sprinkled the, the blood before you came over. Wow. Hey, let me give you a ride. Well, well I'm a, I can drive myself. No, I wanna give you a ride because I sprinkled the blood over my car this morning. <laughs> I want you to experience peace on the way to the doctor today. I want you to stress out about it, yeah, right? That's good. Everything we have contact with, everything we're in touch with, we can sprinkle the blood of Jesus over it and they can't stay here. They got to go find another home, which you guys can go find another home, right? They can't stay here no more, right? Because this is protected, right? Thank you, buddy. Love you. That's what the blood is about. It's the authority we have to send the devil and all his minions to the feet of Jesus. You can't be here. And guess what? You can't be in my car. Guess what? You're not going to be in my cubicle. Guess what? You're not going to be in my office. 
because I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the blood of Jesus over, over my office door too. And when you walk in, something's gonna feel different, right? Your devil thoughts that you had, you're gonna forget them, right? But that's the authority and that's the power that we have. That's it. That's what this is all culminated to. It is getting to the fact of we have access, we have authority, we have power, we have legal binding things when we sprinkle the blood over our door. But it takes action. It takes us being intentional. You'll be intentional to go work out. Why can't you be intentional to plead the blood of Jesus over us? You'll be intentional to make sure you get up and have your devotional time, but you'll forget about pleading the blood of Jesus over top of your household, right? Because the thing is too, it's not just about using your words so you have a covering, so you're safe. Because God wants more than that, right? Like this isn't just a like get out of jail free card. That sometimes I think we use the authority that we have for like this, like, well, you know, I got grace. What God wants is he wants to sit and he wants to commune with you too while you're sprinkling the blood. I just told you, where did it say he was? Standing at your door. He wants to commune with you. He wants to be intimate with you. He wants to have that relationship with you. And it's not just the relationship he wants to have with you. Look at the kids that you're sitting next to right now. He wants to have that relationship with them too at the age they are right now. The power that we have as adults is the same power that these third graders can have right here on the front row. And it's a power that when I was in third grade, I didn't know existed. It's a power that our toddlers downstairs from ages two to five can have. And you know what's the beautiful thing is? They have the faith <laughs> to see it and believe it and take it and run with it. They don't doubt it. They just go, yep, yeah, you're right. God said it, I'm day, I'm, that's mine, right? Just because it, it's something that we should do, we should make sure our kids are doing it right now too. It's just as easy as as they're getting onto the school bus in the morning to go, I plead the blood of Jesus over the doorway of this bus. As they walk into their school, I plead the blood of Jesus over the doors of these schools. I pray that when I walk in here, the presence goes with me. But they don't know it if we don't teach them. They don't know it just with two hours of kids' church. It's gotta happen in the home. There has to be action in the home. Has to be. From my home to your home. This is just for me too. <laughs> just had my kid tell you, yeah, you, you don't always say the right things. I don't always spend enough time in the presence with him. You know what I do? Some other parents might do this. This is my quiet time. A better way to show your kids what quiet time is really like than say, you didn't interrupt me, come on in. Come on in, you didn't interrupt me. Sit down with me. We're just gonna spend time talking to the Lord right now. We're just gonna spend time talking to our Father right now. We're just gonna be in his presence right now. Is there anything you wanna to say to him? Because he's right here, right? There's two things I wanna to do today to close. One of them is, um, if we could just have all the lights brought down. One of them is we're gonna open up the altars and the prayer team will meet you here. Because I think the important thing is, is sometimes even though we know we have the authority now and we know how to do it, we know how to work it, we know what to say and we know it's our words. Sometimes we just need a brother or sister 
come down and agree with us that everything's going to be okay. Sometimes we just need to say, my life is chaotic right now. And I just need some help getting things organized so that I can plead the blood and that my house is rid of all the enemy's attacks. It's that easy. So our prayer team will, will be down on the altar. The second thing is, is I wanna give an opportunity for anybody in the house who feels like, I don't feel like I have ever accepted the fact that I have access to the blood. I've never truly accepted that into my life and given Jesus his rightful place on the throne. And I wanna have access, I wanna have a seat at that table. And so with all eyes, eyes closed, heads bowed, um, if that's you today, can you just slip up your hand? And I, I just shut the lights off just so I, I don't need to see. I just, okay, there's a hand, two hands back there. Three hands, perfect. Let's all pray together. Father God, <laughs> thank you for your son, Jesus. God, I'm a sinner. God, I've messed up. My house is a wreck. But I know your son died for me. I know that your son shed his blood for me. And I accept that shed blood today. And I say today that he is the Lord and Savior of my life. And that he is going to sit on the throne of my heart. God, I thank you for your son. I thank you for that sacrifice. And I thank you that it was for me. And I thank you that today my heart is clean. My home is organized and I have a seat at the table. I love you, God. Amen. You prayed that today and that was like your first time. I want, I want to just get you to connect with somebody. So from this point until we're done, I want you just to head back to our connect corner. Somebody will meet you there just to talk to you. And, and to welcome you into the family of saying, hey, I have access and I have a seat at the table now. Um, and, th and they will talk to you there. And we're gonna pray real quick, close the service. If you need to come down for prayer, we will take as much time with you as possible. We just ask that if you're not gonna pray and you wanna mingle, just if you could just head towards the door, mingle out into the, the uh, gathering place, mingle outside if it's not cold enough. We just wanna give people time to just pray and to really seek God the way they need to um, with some privacy. So God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for the sprinkled blood. We thank you, God, for the shed blood. God, I thank you for this, this series that we've been in that has just unpacked so much for us. God, it, it's changed my perspective on so many things. Father, I thank you that our kids were able to be here on the last day because God, even though I know they didn't hear it all, something's gonna stick with them today. And Father, even if it's just a reminder to us parents that we need to spend more time in your presence and being intentional for our kids. Father, that we need to sprinkle that blood on the door of our homes and, and to plead the blood over our homes just for our kids' future because we are not gonna give the, the enemy territory with our kids, God. But God, I thank you I thank you for this series. And God, I just ask right now, Father, that you just continue to speak, continue to guide us and show us, Father God, what it is that we need to be more intentional with. God, if we need to change our words, Father, let us change our words. Tell us how we change our words. God, if we need to, if we need to be more positive, Father God, I just pray right now, Lord, that you, you just give us that, God, give us that positivity that your son walked this earth with, God where it didn't matter what negative thing came at him, he still 
spoke in love. God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for this day. I thank you for your presence in this house today, Father, from beginning to end. And God, I just thank you that you will be with us because your presence is not in this building, but your presence is in each of us as the church, Father God. So we take your presence with us this week. I thank you, Lord. I praise you. Amen. Amen. If you'd like prayer, the prayer team will be down here. Uh, if, if you're not going to pray, we just ask, let people have their, their moment in prayer today. <laughs>